Hello, everyone. Welcome to a Clear Perspective. I'm Serene Lee. These days, we saw on the news that the CCP took hits from both the U.S. and the Japan. The two countries also allied against the CCP on the issue of Taiwan. The U.S. started with two heavy blows. The first blow took place on Monday. Secretary of State Antony Blinken released the 2021 Congressional Report pursuant to the Ali Visa Genocide and the Atrocities Prevention Act. Ali Visa was a Romanian-born Holocaust survivor. During World War II, when Ali was 15 years old, he got sent to the concentration camp. The act became law on January 14, 2019, signed by former President Trump. The 2021 Ali Visa Act report is the third since the law's signing on January 14, 2019. The report stated Secretary Antony Blinken affirmed in January 2021 that the People's Republic of China is committing genocide and the crimes against humanity. Against Uyghurs who are predominantly Muslim and the members of other ethnic and religious minority groups in Xinjiang, the crimes against humanity include imprisonment, torture, enforced sterilization, and the persecution. Looks like the claim that the CCP committed crimes against humanity was confirmed. The U.S. Department of State also issued a reminder to Xinjiang Supply Chain Business Advisory. The advisory warned that businesses and individuals that do not exit supply chains, ventures, and/or investments connected to Xinjiang could run a high risk of violating U.S. law. Many other countries, including European countries, also chose to stand alongside Xinjiang through imposing a series of sanctions against the CCP. What is the other big strike from the U.S.? The U.S. Federal Communications Commission (FCC) made the final decision to replace Huawei and the ZTE equipment. Last year, the FCC designated Huawei and ZTE as national security threats to communications networks, and barred U.S. firms from tapping an 8.3 billion government fund to purchase equipment from the companies. The FCC passed a rule last December requiring carriers with ZTE or Huawei equipment to rip and replace it. The main concern is national security. We all know that there will be backdoors on Chinese electronic equipment and software. The data will be monitored and collected by the Chinese Communist Party, especially for Chinese cell phones. All users' privacy and the data will be under the control of the Chinese Communist Party. We must be careful and cautious about these things. Some of those data may even be sold on the dark web, which is illegally collected in the Western countries. People can use it in illegal ways and cause great damage. Many people received anonymous scam calls. The police cannot do anything about it. Even the police themselves are getting these calls. So, where do the scammers get your private information, such as your phone number and the address? Well, it is common to buy it from Chinese hackers, so we must be careful with these devices from China. Next, I will elaborate on the U.S. and Japan's cooperation. On Wednesday, Japan released its annual wet paper, its national defense paper. It mentions the importance of maintaining stability in the Indo-Pacific region, specifically regarding the South China Sea and Taiwan. It also touches on how China has relentlessly continued attempts to unilaterally change the status quo by coercion in the sea area around the Senkaku Islands, which are in Japan's territorial waters. The White Paper states that this is fundamentally a violation of international law. Therefore, in response. The White Paper has set forth a number of objectives for strengthening its defense capabilities, basically increasing military power. 
It is almost like another arms race, this time with Taiwan as the centerpiece. If China does anything to Taiwan, Japan will back Taiwan, along with the US and perhaps many more Western countries. This white paper is a formal declaration of Japan's military entry into the Taiwan Strait. And from a geopolitical standpoint, Japan has a great deal to lose if the Taiwan Strait falls to the CCP. From a historical point of view, Japan is the country that understands China and the CCP best. This is not only because Japan is deeply imbued with traditional Chinese culture and has an oriental cultural mindset, but also because Japan knows the history of the foundings of the Chinese Communist Party very well. So what is the CCP's response? A few days ago, on July 12th, an online Chinese military channel supported attacking Japan with nuclear weapons, which sparked public controversy. Even though this channel is not an official government outlet, the content it publishes closely follows the position and the tone of the central government. Recently, the channel openly proposed in its program that in order to stop Japan from supporting Taiwan through military intervention, China should use nuclear bombs against Japan in the first battle, and then continue to use it until Japan eventually could not bear the consequences of intervening in Taiwan's affairs anymore. The content of the video seems naive, ignorant, outrageous, and bloodthirsty, much in line with the CCP's notorious war for real diplomacy. But there was one point in the video that's worth drawing our attention to. It stated that the CCP was facing a great change unprecedented in a century. It suggested that the CCP should take full advantage of this opportunity to realize its goals, which meant that it is necessary for the party to adjust or modify its past promises, commitments, and policies, including its no first use of nuclear weapons policy. This suggestion is consistent with certain official moves made by the CCP. Back in 2013, for the first time, the White Paper on National Defense issued by China did not mention the no first use policy on nuclear weapons, which raised international concern. The key message from this video is that the CCP could use the once-in-a-century opportunity as an excuse to deny any of its past commitments. After all, it already went back on its word with Hong Kong's one country, two systems policy by calling the declaration a historical document. The CCP's intention might not actually be to prepare for attacking Japan with nuclear weapons. It's more likely that it's trying to create a feeling, both domestically and internationally, that since the situation has changed, any breach made by the CCP on prior commitments would be justifiable and understandable, and that it was necessary for strengthening the party and the nation. The CCP, after all, is a cult. They push for atheism. When people don't have faith, they only believe in money. They think of money as God, so they dare to do any evil for the sake of money. And it is very scary when people have no morality. The evil of the CCP is that it has destroyed the beliefs of the Chinese people, which lasted thousands of years. It destroyed traditional Chinese culture. After the Chinese people lost faith in the divine, all kinds of strange phenomena emerged. Recent events include the abolition of merit awards for civil servants and the delegation of the power of law enforcement to the residence committees. This may cause a lot of trouble in the future. The obvious purpose of giving power to the residence committees is to allow them to find people. This is their only way to get funding for themselves.
then the common citizens will be exploited more and have to pay money to officials at various levels. We all know that many officials under the CCP's policies act for the sake of fines, not for the sake of law enforcement. Profiting through the process of law enforcement is their focus. In the future, the Chinese people's life may be getting worse. As we have seen in recent months, the international situation shows that civilized countries and the democracies all over the world are ready to take action against the Chinese Communist Party. I hope the CCP leaders will be realistic and not do anything stupid. In the end, it is the Chinese people who will be suffering. Judging from the current situation, the Chinese Communist Party is already facing troubles internally and externally. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time.